glycerin versus hyaluronic acid. Which one is better for your skin? Mic drop, it doesn't matter. These two ingredients are the subject of intense debate online all of the time. And I simply do not understand why they get so much attention, why we fight over these two ingredients so dang much. What is the deal? Well, they are humectants. Humectants are ingredients in moisturizing products that help to improve water content in your skin, which is great. All right, let's talk about glycerin. It is a colorless, odorless liquid, and it is a humectant. It, again, helps to impart better water content in your skin. Depending on the concentration of glycerin in a formula, it also can create a thin film on the surface of the skin that reduces water loss and protects the skin against irritants. So it offers many benefits directly and then indirectly by increasing water content. When the stratum corneum, the outermost layer of your epidermis, becomes dehydrated, as can occur in a variety of different skin conditions. Maybe you've used too many skincare products, you have an impaired barrier, you're losing water, the skin becomes dry, or it also, I'm sorry to say, happens just as a age-related phenomenon. We start to not have the optimal water content. We're more prone to dryness and irritation. So using moisturizing products, moisturizers that contain humectants as they do, that can improve water content and get things back on track to being smoother, more hydrated. And ultimately, what that does for you cosmetically is it plumps up the skin and it leads to smoothing out of fine lines and wrinkles. When the water content in your skin barrier is optimized through the use of humectants, whether it be glycerin or any of the others out there, what happens is the natural turnover processes of the epidermis, they go along a lot more smoothly. When the water content drops, the enzymes necessary to maintain the normal exfoliation processes and barrier function, they don't operate properly. So you get a buildup of dry, rough skin. When water content is teed up, well, guess what? Everything starts moving along a lot more smoothly. And speaking of more smoothly, you get smoother, more hydrated, more glowy, radiant skin. That's one of the benefits of simply using a moisturizer, regardless of the ingredients. Additionally, using glycerin in your skincare products helps to strengthen the integrity of your skin barrier. It helps to improve the orientation of the lipids in the skin barrier. And ultimately that helps not only with reducing transepidermal water loss, but also limiting penetration of irritants. Now, when it comes to glycerin specifically, the overall formulation makes a huge difference. Like the glycerin is so widely available. If you are using skincare products, glycerin is hitting your face, okay? It's like, goes without saying. It's, it's just in so many things. Here's the thing, at lower percentages, you know, it's a humectant, helps offset some of the drying effects maybe of some ingredients, and it can enhance penetration of certain ingredients, which can be a positive, it can be a negative. It can be a positive in that you get better results, it can be a negative in that you get more irritation. But when it ranges anywhere from 20 to 45%, the product can claim to be a skin protectant. So it can make a drug claim. Several months ago, I discovered a new product from La Roche-Posay, their Cicaplast Gel. Now I've always loved the Cicaplast Balm, a skin protectant with dimethicone, but they came out with a gel version that instead of being a dimethicone skin protectant is a glycerin skin protectant. And it has a high percentage of glycerin. It creates a nice protective hydrating film on the skin surface that for me personally, I find really performs well around the eyes. I highly recommend this around your eyes for a limiting penetration of things in the eyelid skin that can be irritating. If you're dealing with dry, irritated eyelids, this is a great option. It doesn't feel heavy, it doesn't feel greasy. Love it. Um, it could be used anywhere. Truthfully, it's a skin protectant. So it's diaper rash cream, so it's Vaseline. All do the same thing, but with a different ingredient. So they have a different feel, a different consistency. And so consumers are going to pick and choose what they like better. It doesn't necessarily mean one is better than the other. It's more about what you like and want to use. But glycerin as a skin protectant is fantastic. Once you get water content optimized via that humectant action, well, you also get downstream benefits in the realm of skin's mechanical properties. You get improved elasticity, smoothness, overall epidermal thickness improves via hydration. I mean, your skin just starts looking better. At high concentrations, such as what is found in a skin protectant, glycerin can be bacteriostatic, meaning it limits bacteria in a wound. This is really valuable for healing cuts, which glycerin, as a side note, is great 
for its wound healing properties. And this is one way in which it does that. I already kind of mentioned this, but it really helps with skin renewal because again, optimizing water content, things just move along a lot more efficiently. The barrier turns over, you just get healthy, fresh skin and a reduction in that buildup of dry, rough skin texture. Ultimately, that leads to skin that is not only smoother, but less prone to irritation. You have better barrier integrity. Woohoo! So what's the deal with hyaluronic acid then? Well, hyaluronic acid is a abundant in your dermis, the deeper parts of your skin. That's kind of the, the location of interest when we are discussing wrinkles. It is the dermis and you've got a ton of hyaluronic acid in there, but you also have some hyaluronic acid hanging out in your epidermis, plays a key role in hydration there as well. Guess what? With age, hyaluronic acid starts to decline in our epidermis, contributing to overall dryness. Applying it topically can help replenish moisture. Woohoo! Similar to other humectants. Not only is hyaluronic acid widely found throughout your skin, but it's also abundant in your joints. Because of its water binding abilities, it is very hydrating. It helps lubricate. Here is where a lot of the nitpicking getting too sciencey goes down when it comes to hyaluronic acid. So you've got high molecular weight hyaluronic acid and you have low molecular weight hyaluronic acid. And depending on which of these is included and a combination of them can be included in a given product, it can influence how the product performs and its overall properties. High molecular weight hyaluronic acid, much larger in size, can create this sort of thin film on the skin surface that contributes to the viscoelastic properties of a given product, allowing for nice spread on the skin and for reducing transepidermal water loss. But then there is low molecular weight hyaluronic acid as well. It can trickle down a little bit deeper into the skin, helping with water content. And so a lot of what I have come across online, you'll find people worried that the low molecular weight hyaluronic acid or hyaluronic acid in general, there seems to be this idea that it is pro-inflammatory. And I hate to break it to you, but this is not giving you the full picture of topical hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is really, really, really important in wound healing. So wound healing, say from a cut or a surgical incision, it goes through different stages. And a vital aspect of wound healing is the inflammatory stage where inflammation comes in to orchestrate proper and efficient wound healing. Without inflammation, you cannot heal cuts and scrapes. And low molecular weight hyaluronic acid plays a role in that. Hyaluronic acid, high and low molecular weight, actually can reduce inflammation in the skin. Why? Well, because of all of the same things that glycerin can do. When you optimize water content in skin's outermost layer, you improve barrier function, you limit penetration of irritants, and the list goes on and on. And this has actually been demonstrated clinically. There's no clinical evidence in people, objective clinical evidence in people, that applying hyaluronic acid to the skin is inflammatory. Everything clinically oriented that we have says the opposite. We have evidence that topical hyaluronic acid helps with the irritation, the inflammation of atopic dermatitis, an inflammatory skin condition. It helps. It doesn't drive. It helps. Also, rosacea, seborrheic dermatitis, helped by low molecular weight hyaluronic acid applied to the skin in form of a reduction reduction in inflammation, not an increase. So doesn't add up at all clinically that hyaluronic acid is inflammatory, whether it be high or low molecular weight. High versus low molecular weight will all just kind of come down to how a given product performs on your skin in terms of texture. Um, it may be, a, you know, leaning more depending again on how it is formulated overall. As far as other ingredients, it may lean more towards, you know, helping to reduce water loss. It may lean more towards helping with hydration in the deeper parts of the epidermis, but uh, I think people get way too hung up on this, way too hung up on it. Hyaluronic acid applied topically can be quite robust actually at reducing wrinkle depth. I personally observe this on myself all the time. That's why I'm such an advocate for moisturizing the skin as a, a great bang for, for your buck. Just using a moisturizer plumps up the skin surface. You get a reduction in fine lines and wrinkles just by space filling up to 40%, including with low molecular weight hyaluronic acid. Some of the some of the randomized control trials looking at hyaluronic acid topically, I'm not talking about filler that you inject down in the dermis, we're talking about putting it on your skin. The studies using low molecular weight hyaluronic acid had some of the most striking reductions in wrinkle depth. Hyaluronic acid applied topically has also been shown to have a variety of benefits post-procedure. What do I mean by that? We're talking filler, we're talking microneedling, we're 
we're talking laser. Um, after these procedures, when patients apply a topical hyaluronic acid, they have, guess what? Better healing, better outcomes. So at the end of the day, which one is better? It doesn't matter. Choose products that you like. Don't over overthink the science behind glycerin versus hyaluronic acid. They're humectants. They improve the water content in your skin and all of the benefits that come with that you can get from either ingredient or, or you can get from a product that has both, which newsflash, a lot of products have both. Por ejemplo, not a product, but a prescription topical for the treatment of acne, Altrina Lotion, formulated with both glycerin and hyaluronic acid, helps patients with acne tolerate tretinoin better because it's a moisturizing formula. It helps reduce the dryness and irritation that comes along with tretinoin. What are the downsides of using these ingredients? Like, why do some people have issue? Like, what is going on? Well, one possible explanation and I kind of hinted at this earlier in the video, is the fact that, well, humectants improve water content in the skin that ultimately allows for better penetration of things. So you may be getting more irritated by something else that you are using along with these hydrating ingredients. So keep that in mind. I love glycerin in my skincare. I also love hyaluronic acid. I'm an avid user. I genuinely see benefits in my skin using either ingredient and oftentimes I'm using both of them together. Now, if you find a product is irritating to your skin, don't use it. But I wouldn't necessarily laser focus on any one of these ingredients and assume that it is that. When we get older, our skin is not as efficient at at retaining water. That's why we're more prone to dryness and irritation. Some people like myself too, you know, there are their skin conditions like atopic dermatitis, acne, rosacea all have poor barrier function, and that contributes to disease flares and symptomatology. Moisturizers can truly benefit that. You don't have to pick and choose. You don't have to sit there wondering which one is better for you. All right, guys, that's what I wanted to talk about in today's video. I hope this was helpful to you all. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.